All right, so now let's go ahead and power up the radio. We want to connect the battery. We want to attach the antenna, turn on the radio, and when the calibrate date comes on, we want to press confirm. So I'm going to jump over here to the radio. We have here a radio out of the box. I've already put the battery on, as you can see. Look at that, put the antenna on, and I'm going to go ahead and kick on the power here and see what happens. Okay, just like it says, connect the battery, press confirm. Now, we're not going to fill out the calibrate because later in the show here, we're going to get our telemetry information from the, from the GPS. Okay, so it goes through this sequence. This is what you should see on boot up. Okay, now... The display darkens because it's all the light time times out. So after the startup menu has disappeared, we want to press the menu button to bring up the main menu. And for fun, let's just see what firmware is installed on this radio. Okay, because I just pulled this off the, the stack. And we're going to jump in there and do that real quick. So we want to do that by pressing the green or down button and cycle through the menu until you see settings. And of course, this is a menu-driven radio. And we're going to go through that. You'll get very familiar with how to navigate the menus as you begin to get some experience. So let's jump in there and let's activate the display. So what I'm going to do is press menu, scroll down to settings, and I'm going to look at device info. And I have version 306 on my radio. Okay, so I don't have 308. So we're going to put 308 on this radio. So I'm going to exit out of there. So how do you update the firmware? Well, when you put the radio in what's called a firmware update mode, so you do this by at the same time, press and hold the, the PTT button and the green top button while turning on the radio. So let's jump over here into the product cam and we'll put in firmware update mode. So I'm going to be that. So you press and hold. Kind of a look, you gotta got to have two hands here. Whoops. So what you want to turn the radio off, press and hold the PTT button and the top button at the same time, and you want to release that, and you'll see that that light starts flashing. Okay, so it's in firmware update mode. So now we want to attach the programming cable to the PC as well as the radio. So we have a USB type A connector and a two prong connector. And that is what goes to the radio. And we'll quickly go over here and I'll show you how to install that on the radio. And so you open up this side door here on the radio, get your finger in, and there's the port which you program it. And then of course the cable is this, this is the end of the programming cable. And you wanna make sure you securely fasten that. Okay, and you might hear a doink in your windows is it knowing that it auto registers. So that's now ready to program. So now the next step is to go into your uh, CPS and set the COM port. Something for everybody real quick. If you're not sure what the COM port is on your computer, go to device manager and you're gonna look for USB serial device. If you don't see that listed, but you see another COM port that says um, USB serial port or uh, CP something or other, that is the wrong cable for the radio. You may have, you know, a bow thing or something like that that has the chip built into the cable. Um, the Anytone cables do not have a chip built into them. So just keep that in mind. If you need to know what COM port it is and you've got multiple on your computer, go to Device Manager and take a look. Absolutely. And... Believe me, we've had several support calls from folks that are saying it doesn't work. And we found out that there was a, inter they, they mistakenly uh, swapped out the cables because they are not all the same. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the programming cable connected, we want to set the COM port. And that is done by going up here to set and we want to set the COM. Okay, now here's a little trick that I found. Now you can see I've got COM 8, 7, 4, 3, and 9. So which one is it? That's the good question. So what I've done, I'm going to disconnect the programming cable, and one of those should disappear. 
Okay, so it was nine, the one at the bottom. So I'm going to put this back in, and it should reappear. There it is, nine. So I now know that COM port nine is the one that the CPS is using. So there's a little pro tip for you. So let's click OK. Okay, so in the CPS tool, click on Tool, then click on Firmware and Update icon. So Tool, Firmware and Update icon, and that's going to break up this screen right here. Okay, so the following pop-up will appear as we just saw, and we want to click Open Update File and locate the latest version of firmware. Okay, so the one that we're going to use, and this is extremely important, we're going to put 308 on the on the radio. As you saw earlier, uh, 3.06 was on the radio. So we want to open this, and we're, remember, we want to go to that directory that we just set up, which is 308. Okay, now this is where it was all extracted to. And we're going to go down here to the, notice what, where I have this red underlined. We want to go to D878UV2 underscore V3.08 in FW. FW stands for firmware. And it's going to look for this file right here, this SBI file. So let's click on, there's that, there's the directory. So I'm going to left double click there, open it. There's the file. That's the one that's going in to the radio. So I'm going to bring that in and open it. Okay, so the file is open and it's succeeded. So if the file's good, you'll see a success will be displayed. Then we want to click OK and then write the button to the start the process and then click OK to write the radio. So let's go ahead and open it. And we want to click write. And we're ready to write. Click OK. So now it's updating. And if all things are good. You should start seeing this progress bar going across the screen. It takes about maybe a minute, depending on the speed of your computer. The progress bar will be displayed once complete. Write complete will be displayed. Click OK, then exit to close the firmware update process. So let's watch this thing go on. And I am updating my radio as we speak. Hopefully you are too. All right. Write complete. Click OK, and we want to click Exit. And then if we go over here to the product cam, you can see that it's going through its boot up sequence. There, the firmware has been updated. Now, we can confirm that. Disconnect power cable. I want to click. Okay, one of the things I'm going to do real quick, and this is not in the, uh, you see how that's all hard to see? I am going to lower the intensity of this display. And that's called the light time. Oops, I'm sorry, that the uh the backlight and pumping that down to a watt. Watch this. Oh, now we can see it better. So that's just for the purposes of this demonstration. Also a great setting if you're in the car with the radio at night. Yes. Yeah, because it gets pretty bright. The radio's got a lot of neat functionality. So let's go ahead and take a look and see. Did the firmware take the ice info? Ah, there it is. 308. I'm in. Great. So it worked. So that's how you can check to see if the firmware. Icon updates. This is another thing we want to do to get the uh, radio ready to roll. Uh, icons are something that any tone is improving. They just recently, to my knowledge, added a new set of icons, uh, changing out what had been normally uh, used for, let's say, for example, GPS. So we're going to go ahead and update that as well. So Going over here to the CPS, we want to click on the tool and then click on firmware and icon update, just like we did. So let's go over here, click on tool, firmware and icon update. We want to open the update file and we are looking for the directory called icon, uh, 878UV icon v1.23. That's in that directory again. So open update file. And we want to back out of here and we want to go to icon v123. And this is the file we want to load. So we want to load that. And we want to have success, of course. Now, another thing is required to put the video in to icon update mode. So that's the next step. So what we want to do, you got to make sure the radio is off. And then you press and hold PF2 and PTT simultaneously while turning on the radio. And the radio will boot, eventually display update mode, then release the buttons. And by the way, I know this may seem like, oh, why do I got to do all this stuff? Okay, I just want to, once this radio is set up, okay, it's set up. 
Okay, now again, there's firmware updates that take place, but for the most part, this radio is being prepped for use so that you can enjoy it for a long time. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna come over here and the radio is gonna turn it off. And like like I like I indicate in there, PF2 is this button right here. So it's PTT, PF1, and then PF2 down the left side of the radio. And your green button on top is your PF3. What we're going to do is hold the PTT button and this PF2 button, and we're going to turn the radio on at the same time. Oops, I'm going to do this again as I let go of the soon. Okay, now, I know that looks, that's there. How's that? Okay, so let's see, there's update mode. Okay, so it's in update mode. So now, we want to make sure the programming cable's connected. Now we want to click right to begin updating the radio's icons. So right, can you? Okay, so now it's updating the icon file. You don't have to do this hardly at all. Uh, I probably updated the icon file once. Yeah, they uh, just released this uh, update and it's been, what? Like literally right after I started, which is almost this November will be three years ago. Um, right after I started, they released an icon update file, and we're back. We're getting a new one now, and uh, we do have a screenshot in the presentation that'll show you what the icons look like with the updated icons. And keep in mind, the icons do not affect the functionality of the radio, whether you have the file updated or not. It's just for aesthetics. The firmware update process is always the same. The ICOM update process is always the same. The CPS update process is always the same. And once you master this, you will. So the write was complete and we got it. And we went to the radio icons are now updated. Click exit and cycle the power on the radio. So click exit. Let's go here and take a look at the radio. So I'm gonna turn the radio off and we'll turn it back on. Now, the radio is still in its generic form, but the cool thing is the firmware is updated and the icons are updated. So rest assured. Do you go through the same process to update the firmware for the APRS and the Bluetooth? Okay, so here's something very important on these radios. There is a file in the A read first folder about the Bluetooth firm or Bluetooth APRS update. There's two separate updates. One of them you can do with the CPS. And if your radio, if you go to menu, settings, device info, and scroll all the way down, if it says version 1.06 for the APRS board, it's exactly the same as the 2.0 version. Um, the newer boards will say 2.0. The older radios will be 1.06. You do not need to update that. However, they did release a new Bluetooth update that you do have to have a Android device for it to be able to update the Bluetooth module in all the current radios because until Anytone ships the newest shipment of 878s that they're producing right now, um, it will still have the version 1.0043 Bluetooth firmware on them. The Bluetooth update that came out uh, basically uh, tightens up the connection for Bluetooth with the push top button that's included with your radio. So it makes it stay connected more. I have an older Anytone uh, D168. Can I update it with 3.08? No. Each radio has its own firmware and CPS. So you cannot use the same uh, firmware for a different radio. It's got to be the one that matches. Uh, the current version for the 168 is 1.07. And to answer this real quick, because I know somebody's probably going to ask it later, um, Anytone has no plans to introduce GPS or Bluetooth to the 168. So that is not something that will be coming to the 168, uh, according to Anytone, ever. The 168 is an entry-level DMR radio with a lot of the same features as the 878, but it will not have Bluetooth and will not have GPS. Did you have APRS board version 2.00? Should you upgrade? No, that is the current firmware version for your radio. Your radio has the newer APRS board in it, so that's what it shipped with, is 2.0. So, 
uh, you should be good on that. So I'm getting an open comp court fail. Okay, so James, I've seen this before. What you want to do is you probably just need to redo your comp port setting. Just go back up to set com and redo it. Uh, the other thing you can check is um, also make sure that uh, it's showing in device manager, USB serial device. Oh, <laughs>